Now this was huge, I mean this was humongous. This was basically, uh, imagine if America only had Westminster for one year, that's what this was, it was humongous. So new attractions were announced, such as competitions for police dogs, warrant ambulance dogs, water dogs, and more. Um, and Rittmeister von Stefanitz from Germany would be there in person to judge the newly created classes for German Shepherd dogs. And if you know anything about the German Shepherd breed, he's very he's about as famous to the German Shepherd breed as you'll discover Albert Heim is the British Mountain Dog breed. What? Yes. So see, it's pretty important. Um, two Appenzeller seven hoon appeared, and six Durbach hoon appeared. Uh, the males Blas, Flax, Prings, Beringi, and Berry, and the female Berlin all came from the suburbs of Bern, except for Flax, who was shown by a young veterinary doctor from Canberstay. It was at this show when the leading people from the SCS who were present in Bern decided that the Durbach dogs were actually, you know, worth becoming a real breed, and this is when they began to accept them as an actual dog breed. The dogs were awarded with prizes. Ringy won first prize in his class, Flax second, and Prince won third. And Belin became the first Durbach, one of the first Durbach dogs registered um, in the Swiss stud books. And all four of them were the first dogs with numbers 2698 through 2701. So the pure breeding of Durbach dogs could begin. And this is actually Belin, she's a girl, and she was one of the first ones to actually be registered. Does she look a lot like our burners of today? Some of them do. Now what's really interesting about some of the photos I'll show you of actual dogs that were at some of these shows in Switzerland, some of them look like burners of today, some of them look absolutely nothing like burners of today. So you'll be a little bit kind of surprised. Um, but the dog show was a breakthrough, and Durbachler found its ways into the heart of several dog enthusiasts who adopted this breed to ensure its purity by mating only Durbachler to Durbachler. Some of these men were the men of Bergdorf. The first men who tackled this new responsibility were a few merchants and factory owners from the nearby city of Bergdorf. They had all owned or bred other breeds of dogs before. Um, Godfried Mumenthaler was a member of the Berner Society. He acquired the winning bitch baleen that you saw on the previous slide soon after the show. And uh, he also got a male called Sultan, which you see on the slide. Factory owner Matt Schroff acquired a bitch named Priska, and uh, with the help of Dr. Scheidegger, they eventually began breeding, and these were all the foundation dogs for the kennel of von Bergdorf. When the first litters were born, puppies were acquired by other businessmen in Bergdorf, and the kennels of von Burgut, von Summerhaus, and von Schlossgut, and others were started. One of these men was Professor Albert Hein. Now a lot of you guys probably have heard the name and you think of him as a dog man. Actually dogs were way down on the totem pole for him. He was a Swiss geologist who taught at one of the Swiss universities. And he does have a lot of writings on dogs, but to be honest with you, he's mainly known for his geology. And he has written some books that are still in use by geologists today actually. Um, in 1904, this is when Dr. Heim saw a Durbachler for the very first time. He worked tirelessly between 1907 and the mid-20s to work out the first breed standard. Now to give you some more history on him, he was a gentleman who loved, he loved the Newfoundland breed, and actually he did write a small pamphlet on the Burner breed in 1914, but he has a book on, on uh, St. Bernard's that's about this thick, one on Newfs that's probably thicker. Um, he wrote more about them than he ever did the Burner. The Burner was kind of lower on the total hold to him as well but this will explain a little bit why he was so interested in bringing the Newf into the Bernese Mountain Dog breed later on down the road. At the 1907 dog show, Heim decided he would judge. So some of their animals were shown, and this was the International Dog Show in Lucerne, and uh, he had been appointed to take responsibility for the Swiss cattle dogs, and he was the judge. Moomin Taylor presented Sultan, who you just saw on the previous slide, and. Uh, Franz Schleckenlieb showed two males that were acquired in a nearby village named Nero and Bello. These two males were said to be the really true type of Durbachler dogs because they had a split nose. Did you hear that split nose? Now, here's where I'm going to stop for a second. Say that the cute burner face that you guys are all accustomed to probably was not the typical burner face you would have seen back then. Many of them had cleft palates and split noses, which we still see cropping up in some of the breed today. 
Um, as a matter of fact, I will say some of the more modern pictures of cleft palates that you see, can, if you go to Don Gabig's website, she has some photos of them. Um, she's one of the few breeders in the U.S. that will admit that she has produced a few of them every now and then. Um, and many breeders have, but unfortunately you don't hear about it typically. Um, but there were cleft palates, and I'll show you a picture of that in just a little bit. But Hyde carefully examined each dog, and he listened to their owners, encouraged them to report everything they considered worth telling them about this new breed. So one of the things back then that was different about this dog show was you didn't just go in the ring, show your dog, the judge fell all over, and walk out. You had to actually sit there and talk to the judge about your dog and tell them all of your dog's redeeming qualities. And this is where we get Nettie von Bergdorf. Mumenthaler, as I said, had prevented Salton, and uh, you know, Heim carefully examined the dogs. But Heim placed this dog first before all the others in spite of her young age. She was not even 10 months old. She had a slightly split nose. After the show in Lucerne, she was sold to Franz Schleckenli, who produced many litters with her. She was shown several times and she always won. Incidentally, the picture that you see on the screen was actually painted by Albert Heim. And we still have it hanging in the Swiss Museum today, so it is still in existence. Um, this one actually comes from the original 1914 book that he wrote that I'll show you in just a few moments. And it is uh, a very beautiful hand-colored plate in the book. So after the show, the uh, official weekly paper of the Swiss Kennel Club, everyone could read the first of a long series of famous judges' reports by Hein on the Swiss Senate which have been a very vital contribution to the shaping of the breed. After each show back then, the judges would actually write a report on every single dog and it would be published for everyone to see. So first he assumed what he had learned about the purpose and origins of these dogs, and then he gave his general impression of the quality of the class, followed by a short and accurate description of every single specimen, and as a conclusion, a guideline for the breeders about what the next steps they should take in breeding should be. So he judged Bernie's mountain dogs from 1907 onwards at every dog show until late into the 20s, and he always published a valuable, valuable report after the shows which included every single dog. Now, there were problems in the new breed. Tails. Tails were so strongly arched that they touched the back or laid on the back like a husky or spitz dog. Hanging tails were much more beautiful and much more desirable. Split noses. They were considered to be a true characteristic of the breed, and the split-nosed dogs to be the real Durbachos. They also had double dew claws. Heim suggested that they be removed to allow for free gait without interference by these useless appendages. Heim also suggested that the light yellow eyes that gave the early dogs a wild expression be elim eliminated. Now, if you look at some of the burners in the room, they look very friendly and sweet, but imagine them with these split noses and yellow eyes coming at you. They might look a little bit fearful. And it's believed that the farmers also continue breeding some of these dogs like that because, you know, it helped with their guard, guarding uh, abilities. So now we're going to see the split and cleft noses. So this is a picture actually from a, uh, a book published by Hans Raber in the 70s. And it shows a, a picture of a dog with a cleft palate. As you can see from the way the dog looks from the front, you know, you wouldn't really think there's any physical deformities. Inside his mouth, of course, there is, and many times today, some of these dogs have a very difficult time eating, and a lot of them do end up being put down because it's very difficult for them to eat actual food. So when the gentleman from Bergdorf returned from this Lucerne dog show, they learned that cleft noses were a serious malformation and not proof of the better quality of any dog. One quarter of all of the dogs at the 1907 show had split noses. 25% is a pretty high percentage, actually. One viewpoint was not shared by Heim and the new breeders. Heim considered the split noses to be a deformity. The new breeders really didn't. They said, you know, we could keep breeding this. The deformity causes the nostrils to back up on one another, and in severe cases, continue into the gum area, causing the incisor teeth to become arranged one against one another. Many of the old, old farm dogs did have these cleft noses, and it was not considered a deformity. In fact, it's believed that it did make them look more fierce. The club eventually ruled to disown the split nose, and the 1910 show in Bergdorf had only one split nose in an entry of 107. So it drastically was reduced from 25% um, to a little under 1%. The two males, Bello and Nero, who had split noses, were registered as number 3473 and 3.